Hello Arts 102, welcome to the shape demo for Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you perhaps the most powerful tool for this type of assignment for making shapes, and that's called the pen tool. And the pen tool is a tricky little beast. It, if you've turned it on and played with it, you probably were baffled. The um, pen tool is something that is going to make vector shapes, and if you're going to be a graphic design major, you really want to try to master the pen tool. Um, and if you just want to make really nice sharp shapes, then the pen tool is awesome for that. Also, tools similar to this vector drawing um, device that I'm going to show you it will help you make fonts and um, other vector type drawings. So let's get started. Let's go to the shape unit in the um, D2L. You're probably already there because you're watching this. And I'm going to go right to the pen tool under lecture notes. There's a folder called pen tool, and I'm going to click on that. And I've got a couple of cheat sheets in here which are useful. You might want to even print these out, and um, when you get them printed out, um, come back to this video just to have them handy. So good cheat sheets in there. <clears throat> and what I want to do is I want to open this P this pen tool EX1. Um, there's a few of these. I'm going to start with EX1, obviously, naturally. And I'm going to download that. Okay. And I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to do something real quick that you don't have to do. I'm doing this because I'm not sure how this particular... Um, how this text is going to pan out on the podcast. I'm going to increase the contrast a little bit so that this is hopefully more vid visible. Okay, so <clears throat> what you've got here is you've got uh, a couple of points where it says click here. Um, what I want to do is I want to turn on the pen tool. That's right here. It's above the text tool. P is the shortcut key. And what the pen tool is, what you have to understand, is that the pen tool is not a drawing tool. The pen tool is actually a point plotting tool. It creates vectors. So what this is telling you here is we're just going to try to create a vector triangle. So step one is click right here, and step two, click here, and you can see it drew a line from one to the next. And you know what? I goofed up. I apologize. I forgot to check my options. Always check your options first when you grab a tool. So I'm going to actually step backward a few steps until my path is gone, or um, you know, better yet, just to for healthy paranoia, why don't you just revert it? So. When I click on this, it's going to start making a path, and that's not what I wanted in this particular case. That's going to be a little confusing. I want to change that pen tool mode to shape, and a shape will work exactly the same way that these shapes work, um, with the difference that we're drawing the points now. So, and I don't want a green fill. I'm going to use a black fill. The assignment is calling for straight black only, straight black and straight white only. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this step one here. I'm going to click on that dot. Step two, click on that dot. Whoops. And step three, you're going to click on that dot. And what this does is once you've got more than three points, it's going to try to complete the shape by drawing a line from the last back to the first point. But you don't want to rely on that. You want to actually, on step four, where it says repeat step one, that's just telling you to click on this same dot again. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's, I'm going to even zoom in a little further so you can really see this. There's a little circle next to the pen tool. And that is indicating that you are about to close the path. And go ahead and click there to close the path. You want to try to always close your paths. So you want to go back to that first um, point that you made in each one. Okay, and 
that's all there is to this one. That's a very simple shape that we've created using the pen tool. Okay, so I'm going to go back to um, D2L and I'm going to grab pen tool EX2. Download. There we go. I'm going to do my brightness and contrast again. You don't have, to, again, you don't have to do that. I'm going to do that on every one of these. You don't have to do it. Okay, so <clears throat> now what we're going to do is um, when we cl single click on all these points, basically we're creating a polygon. And the polygon, if I were to just single click on all these one, two, three, or well, I should say one, three, five, seven, then I end up with a polygon. Um, Pen tool can also do some really nice curves, some beautiful, beautiful curves. And basically, when we do a curve, we're working with what's called Bezier handles, and that just means um, they kind of act like rubber bands. When I click on my first point, I'm going to hold this down, and I'm going to drag to this area right here, this little square, and then I'm going to release it. And that's going to drag out a pair of those Bezier handles. And if you want to get this perfectly straight, you can use that Shift modifier key. So notice I'm still holding down the, the mouse button, and I'm getting a pair of Bezier handles. Now that's not going to do anything. I'm going to release there. That's not going to do anything until I get my second point on step three here. So press here and drag the handles right down to that second box and now you can see what it's doing is it curves from the first line to the second instead of making a straight line sorry the first point to the second and the bezier handles you can think of them as sort of like magnets and these these curved lines you can think of as like rubber bands that respond to the magnets somehow I don't know how that works uh, physically but let's just pretend it does and that's kind of how it how to think of this so on step five I'll pull this out and drag it and I'll kind of show you what I mean I can I can drag this out and the magnet is as you can see is pulling that that line in one direction or another this is a really tricky technique to get used to it seems counterintuitive at first but this really creates the best possible shapes it will be very crisp and clear and it will create vector shapes which are infinitely scalable that means basically you can make it as big or as small as you want you can blow it up to the size of the moon and it will be just as crisp as it is on this image if we um, blow up a raster image, which is pixels, then we're going to start to see jagged edges around those images. If we make that too big, it starts to look really bad. So some of you might have already noticed this. Um, so this is pretty straightforward for the rest of the for the rest of this particular exercise. I just click on 0.7, drag it up to 0.8, and release. And for the final bit. Um, it actually says repeat steps one and two. So the reason for that is because that last, the closing uh, point there is going to, I've still got that handle to deal with. So even though I could just click on it, I'd end up with a corner and that it would, that would be strange. What we're going for here is a circle. So there you go. Um, pretty nice circle. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what's wrong with just using the ellipse tool and making a circle? Well, nothing. Um, but I'm just trying to show how to use the pen tool. Um, let's take a look at this, too. I'll just I'll show you real quick. You don't have to make this if you don't want to. You can, but it doesn't really matter. Um, if I turn on my pen tool and... Uh, no, better yet, actually. Let's look at another tool down here. This other this other arrow what is that it's like another mouse pointer what's that about that's the path selection tool and in that drawer is the direct selection tool and those are a couple of handy little 
devices to play with these points. I can drag out a selection with the direct selection tool and I can grab one point at a time. See how this is basically the exact same thing we just drew. It's got four points. The handles go in the same direction that we drew ours in. And you want to know something really interesting is with these uh, pre-made shapes, um, you're welcome to grab the points and really just tweak them if you want. And make I don't know what this is now, an egg, a weird egg. Um, but this is <clears throat> this is legit. You can you can see how these vectors are working now. Okay, so um, we're done with that. If if you got this, then great. If not, you can just try it again. Uh, I'm going to go back to D2L, and I'm going to grab the EX3, and I'm going to download this. And I'll do my contrast adjustment. <clears throat> okay, now at this point, I think you might be starting to get the hang of these little exercises. Um, they're not uh, too hard, they're kind of straightforward. So, step one, press on this, drag down to step two and release. Step three is we're going to click on this point once, zoom in a little bit, and then release that's going to make a corner. Then I'm going to click on it again, drag down and release. So we're making corners and that is going to make a shape that kind of waves like like hills. If we did not do that we would end up with more of a sine wave that goes up and down like that. So we're making corners now. Single click on step 5 and then click again on the same point drag it down, single click on step 7, click again and drag it down. So you end up with kind of these hills, upside down hills. Okay, on to exercise 4. And this one's pretty simple. Just a matter of we're going to single click on this and we're going to drag it up. And single click on step four, drag it up to step five, and we'll make kind of a wave. <clears throat> Again, the tool by default is trying to draw a line from your last point that you put down back to your first point and it'll if you've got a fill applied it'll try to do this so that it has a way to apply the fill now we're gonna end up with some funny situations with that in a minute here so let's grab EX5 let's download that okay and same thing, step one, click, drag it up to step two, release. And this is gonna, we're gonna end with a sine wave on this one. Step three, click on step three and drag it down to step four and release. Step five, click and drag up to step six. Step seven, click and drag down to step eight. And that just creates a curve that flows from one to the next. Notice how many points we used. If you're um, really going for pen tool ninja dumb, then you are trying to use as few points as possible to describe your shape. We've only used four points to make this interestingly complex shape. Okay, so pen tool exercise six. And same thing here, step one, we're going to drag it down to step two and release. And step three, we're going to drag it down to step four and release. This is very similar to one that we just did, except we're not making corners on each other step here. And when we do that, we end up with 
instead of hills, we end up with a wave that goes up and down. Okay? So that just gives you an idea. What we're going to do now is go back to D2L one more time. And um, for this assignment, you're creating sea creatures that you're creating silhouettes of sea creatures and the silhouettes have to be recognizable. Um, so the good news is you're welcome to trace and if you learn how to do this with the pen tool it comes out pretty nice. So the pen tool swan is the next one I want to grab and I'm going to download this and open it into Photoshop. And this will be a more complex shape, obviously, as you can see. And the, um, the type of shape that you will create is going to be, um, in a lot of ways, similar to this. You're going to find the contours and the curves of the creature and follow it with uh, whatever tool you choose. Um, again, pen tool is the best. So I'm going to pick a starting point and the starting point is really pretty arbitrary. Um, I'm going to just choose the top of the head and I'm going to start with a point. I'm going to drag it out just a little bit because I know that the outgoing and incoming curve is going to have to curve around this head. And <clears throat> I don't need to go into too much detail here. Um, the shape will probably read without too much detail. I want to go for fewer points. Now I, I clicked right above the beak, kind of right below the eyebrow, I guess. And now I'm faced with a little dilemma. Now if I let this up, the curve out is going to go like this. It's going to go, you know, if I, I'll just show you when I click on the tip of the beak, it's going to do this. That's probably not what I want. So <clears throat> I'm going to, oh phooey. I It gave up my last point and what I what I did was I, un, I clicked on step backward but then it deselected my path. So now I need to reselect the path. I'll show you how to do that. If it starts a new path when you do when you click on something um, that's probably not what you want you have to click on the last point you drew and you'll get this little sort of well this little icon next to your pen tool I don't know how to describe it like a little square with lines coming out of it just single click on that and now when you drop your next point you're working off that line okay so what I want to do is I want to actually break this point and make it a corner because that's a hard turn. And I'm going to do that just by holding down the Alt key. And that frees my outgoing handle to go in any direction. And I can just have it follow the contour. That's, that's a corner. You're going to do that on corners. Um, same thing with the edge of the beak here. I'm going to make a little curve and then I'm going to break that point with the Alt key. That's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to pull away a little bit so you can see it. I'm not going to pull the, the Bezier handle this far, but I'm just showing you that it's broken. I'm holding down the Alt key. Um, uh, broken means that it's becoming a corner. That's the terminology. Okay, so now I'll just go up the neck and I'm kind of laying these points down one at a time and just following the contour. <clears throat> I'm going to zoom out some and we'll work on a wider scale here. Um, I'll put a point about halfway down the neck. I'm not even sure how to describe um, the way I make these decisions. I, I know that I can make the points pretty efficiently um, but that just comes with experience and experimentation. So. I'll put one halfway down the center of the neck and what you want to do is you're trying to find kind of the changes so 
down here where the neck starts to turn. I'm going to wrap a point around there. Zoom in a little bit again. And there's a little wave cresting above the neck here. I'm going to just leave that out of it because that's probably not the actual edge of the animal. So I'm just going to come down here and just kind of guess where the edge of the animal is. And <clears throat> I won't worry too much about getting every little detail like coming up and getting the, the flipper here. I'm just going to come up to the butt end and start that curve. Now as I work around here pretty soon, like I said, the last point is trying to draw a line back to the first point. Now pretty soon this is going to cover my image. So let's let's work up to that point. I'm going to come up the tail feathers and I'm actually going to put my next point it's not going to be here, it's going to be here. And I'm going to let the curve just wrap all the way around that little bit of tail feather. Just like that. And keep holding this down. I'm going to break the handle and go back up to where that little tail feather is. Um, that little tip of that tail feather. And I'm just going to single click to get one point there. Okay, so, and now we can't go any further because our shape that we're trying to silhouette is covered up. So what I want to do over here in the layers, I've got my shape one layer started. I can just bring the opacity down to maybe 50, 40 to 50 percent. doesn't really matter as long as you can see through it. And then I can just continue on. So no big crisis there. Well, let's get a, cor let's get a corner point down here. I'm going to just break that handle and point it up the side of the back here. And one more point right around the crest of the back. And one point, I think, three quarters of the way down the back. I'm going to put one point a little way up the neck and I'm going to pull that that handle down so I can get a nice curve. I want to try to get the outgoing curve to follow the contour of whatever I'm drawing, but I also the uh, I also want the um, I'm sorry, I think I said the wrong thing. I want to get the incoming curve of this point to follow the contour of whatever I'm tracing over. But I also want the outgoing curve to start the next contour. And they're, they're in a little bit of conflict right now. You can break this. It won't be a hard, hard corner, but you can press the Alt key and break it so that it's actually pointing up the side of the neck properly. And you won't go in there. So now I'll put one right up towards the top of the head. Just give it a little bit of little bit of curve and then finally again when I get to my last point I get that little circle icon indicating that I'm about to complete the path and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna hold for a second just like we did in that last exercise um, like the circle exercise for example and I'm gonna watch these curves a little bit try to follow that contour as much as I can okay <clears throat> looks great and I can bring my sh uh, opacity back up to 100% on this shape. And I could even turn the background off so I can just see the shape that I drew. And so again, like I said, um, the pen tool is a really tricky little beast to figure out. Uh, but it does make the best um, shape assignments that you can get definitely the best bang for your buck and if you're uh, planning to go into graphic design I would try to make friends with the pen tool if you can so it's better sooner than later because you're gonna have to eventually anyway <laughs>